All right, guys, today we're going to install a stereo uh, in a, a 2008 Jeep Wrangler JK. This can apply 2007 to 2011. Um, what you're going to do, you watch my other video, how I showed you how to remove, just remove the radio. Well, in, in this uh, video, uh, you're going to have to remove the whole panel. So if you watch the other video, it's going to show you how to take how to take the top piece off so you can get the radio out. But after that, then you're going to have to pry. There's a there's a bottom piece that goes here. Let me find it. It's, it's right here. This piece goes on the bottom, all the way in the bottom. What you do is you're just going to pry it off. There's two clips here. One and two on the bottom. You're going to pry this off. That's where it goes on the bottom. And then there's going to be two seven millimeter screws that are down here. You'll see them as soon as you pry this panel off. And you just take them out and then you're going to, you're going to move it away and you're going to be at where we are right now. Okay, and the reason why is I'm going to explain the wiring. For some reason, there is not a, in this stereo plug, there is not a switched, a switched voltage. Meaning that when you turn the ignition on, all right, you're going to have battery power when you turn it off you're not going to have battery power because the radio pretty much any radio is going to need a, a, a constant power which is for memory a switch which like i just told you it powers on with the ignition and it shuts off so the radio doesn't stay on when you turn the key off and ground for some reason this doesn't have the uh the red wire which is switched wire so you have to find an area where you're going to have switched power from the car and on this particular model, if you come in the, in the back, you unplug the cigarette lighter, you're going to see a plug like this. Okay? So, this is from the, the cigarette lighter. Because when, when you shut the car off, there's no power to the cigarette lighter. This is ground, the black. And the blue with the pink stripe is switch power. That's where you're going to connect your red wire from the wiring harness, which I'm going to explain, I'm going to show you in a little while. And you're going to use one of these um, connectors. Basically, you put this on, you're going to put the red wire in here, and this is going to squeeze down and make contact on both of them so you don't have to cut it. All right, and then it's going to give you, that's going to give you a connection, and you just plug it right back into your cigarette lighter. Okay, so now let's just take this all to the bench and continue. Okay, now the dash kit I got is to install an Alpine unit I had. Uh, to replace the factory radio. And obviously, as you can see, this is called a one din. This is basically a double din. So you're gonna have a space in the dash, so you have to get a kit. And the kit I got was the one that has a little pocket that replaces the width of the original unit. If you're gonna use a wider screen or maybe a backup camera type wider screen, you're gonna need a different kit, but they're gonna mount the same way. They have to mount, see, like the mounts over here, it basically looks the same as this one. So if you're gonna get it, it's not gonna have a pocket. It's gonna be the same procedure. It's just that it's a little bit different to install it. I'm not installing that one, I'm installing this one. All right? So the kit, kit that I got for the single DIN, I got this Metro. Metro's makes a good brand. And this is a 996511. It's 99-6511. And that dash kit comes with the, um, the trim panel it comes with the pocket, it comes with the size to mount the stereo, and um, it doesn't come with the wire harness. The wire harness you're going to need um, for any any radio is going to, I got this one from Red Wolf, never heard of the brand, but for some reason Metro doesn't make it, and probably Metro doesn't make it for that reason I was talking about before with the red wire, and I'm going to explain that. For some reason it doesn't have a switched power. All right, this one is Red Wolf. It actually says Car Stereo Wire Harness 2011 Dodge Chrysler Jeep. Okay, you can look that one up. And you're gonna need a antenna adapter because the um, the antenna on an Alpine or most aftermarket units is gonna be the standard one like this. And inside, and if you look in the back of the factory one, it's not like that. So you're gonna need this adapter that's gonna plug into the car. See, see this one, it's different. You're gonna plug into the car and then you're gonna have the universal antenna that plugs in to your stereo right here. 
So you're gonna need this. This one is Metra. And it's a 40-EU10. It says fits European, because European cars have, have basically the same antenna. Okay? And the wire harness you're gonna get is gonna be like this. This wire is gonna be separate. <clears throat> You're gonna have these wires, not this, this goes into the Alpine, so make believe this is not here, basically it's gonna be like that. <coughs> Excuse me, and then I'm gonna show you how to hook up the wires. Now, in the back of the unit, or well, any unit that you have, it should have a diagram on it showing you which wires go where. I mean, I've been doing this for 40 years, so I know the color of the wires, but you always still have to check the wires, especially, if you have your yellow wire, the memory, the red wire, switch power, and ground, always do it with a, um, don't do it with a test light, you do it with an ohm meter. You do it with a volt meter to make sure you got the proper voltage. Before you hook it up, you don't want to mess up anything in the car, you don't want to fry any wires or, or the stereo. Okay? So, now, they're basically color coded. And what I don't like about this product, this red wolf is they don't tell you the wiring diagram, uh, the wire colors where they go. Um, like I said, I know where they go from from just knowing it and from the radio itself. But this one for some reason doesn't have it. They do have online stereo wiring diagrams called Bulldog. You can look that one up. I believe it's Bulldog. You go there, you punch in your car, and it gives you the colors and it gives you, you know, uh, the colors of the wires, uh, the negative and positive for the speakers and all of that. So let's get back to this. So basically, your power, and like I said, if you have a backup camera or something, that's completely different, that's a different video. I don't have a backup camera, so I can't explain that, guys, to you. This is basically, you guys wanna hook up a simple stereo with the uh, yellow, which is memory. That'll go right back into, basically the color coder too. Yellow, and another thing I wanna back up, because there's a lot of things. If you're putting in external amps, that's different. That's a different video. This is not external amps. This is using the power of the unit. If you're hooking up external amps, you pretty much probably know how to do that yourself. You would hook up the RCAs here. That's just a completely different system. All right. So again, getting back to this, this is the part that's from the Alpine or the aftermarket head unit. You're going to have yellow. It goes into this yellow. You're going to have, and and if you have, and again, if you have a power antenna. This Jeep don't have a power antenna, so you're not gonna use the blue with the white stripe. Now, the blue, solid blue, that can go, that can go to your amps. That's a, a remote to, keep, to turn on your amps, but again, we're not doing that. But that's just to show you why those are tap, those are, um, they're onto the side. I typed them, uh, type, tap the, uh, taped them up, I'm sorry, because I'm not using them. Okay, so back to that. And now your orange wire on this particular, uh, Alpine, it has the orange wire, that's called illumination. That's basically the same as switched power. In other words, when you turn the ignition on, you want it to illuminate, but that's also the red. So I tied the red in, red in with the uh, orange, and now you got your single red wire. This is gonna go to switched power, and this is gonna go where I showed you before. It's gonna go on the cigarette lighter, that terminal I just showed you, That's this is gonna be uh, installed there. That's going to give you a switch power, your memory power that keeps memory uh, uh, and, uh, for the, uh, the radio, and your black is your ground. Okay, now once you got those, those three, the rest are speaker wires. And basically it's going to be green to green, green with black stripe to green with black stripe, white to white, white with black stripe to white with black stripe, etc. So basically your speaker wires are the, are the whites. Like I said, the uh, one and one, the light gray, that's one and one, the green, one and one, and the purple, one and one. That's four speakers, two in the front, two in the back. Once you hook those all up, and what you should do, what I did, what I like doing, is getting a, the shrink wrap, putting the shrink wrap on the, the wire before you solder it. I did solder them. You could twist them if you want. Soldering is a better connection. Then you slide it over and you use like a hairdryer or if you have a heat gun, it shrink wraps to make a nice permanent seal. Another way you can do it, if you don't have a, a soldering iron, you can twist them together and put black tape. You know, it's gonna save the same purpose, but this is a little bit better connection. 
Okay, so that to recap that, okay, you're gonna need your switch power, which is always red, memory, which is yellow, and black, which is ground. Okay, that's for the video and the rest of them are speak wise. Okay, step two. Now, what you wanna do, these side rails that come with it, basically, you're gonna hook to the sides of the radio and then it slides in here. Okay, slide in here, I'll show you. So now, what you gotta do is you gotta decide how far you want the radio in there. I like it flush. And these, back up again this little thing is not supposed to be here this is the trim piece this is after sorry like I said these slide in and they're gonna lock in there on both sides like that so put the radio in you want to decide and on the side over here let me explain let's show you again take this out and they're, they're, they're marked right side, left side. Looking at the radio, this is the right side. And you see over here, you're gonna find, there's plenty of mounting spots. You're gonna find where you want it. You see, like it just basically stops like that. You put a screw here and a screw there. You do the same thing on the other side. Okay, on a side note, once you install these, make sure you use um, the supplied screws and don't use screws that are longer than this you see how long they say they're eight millimeter all right anything else too long is going to damage the unit that's a that's a, a little 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 tip that can destroy the seat uh, the uh the radio and you screw them in just a little snug you don't have to they're not going anywhere a little snug like that make sure they're even on both sides see it to this side and then you take it, make sure it's right side up. You slide it in. And basically there's, there's little clips here. Let me see, I'll show you. Right here. You see this little clip right here? It clips right in. Basically when you put it in, it pops out. So it can't go, you can't move it back. And I'll show you on this side. You see this clip? In other words, you want to get it out, you would have to push this clip in and then it comes out. But when you lock it in, she locks in like that and it's tight. And then once you do that, you make sure it's straight. You know, the face is straight, top and bottom. And then this piece is gonna go right here. I'm not gonna put it in. And it just clips in and it gives you a nice clean look. It's gonna give you a nice clean look. And you got a little pocket for the cell phone. Pack of gum, that's about it. All right, okay, actually we could just put this in now. All right, it's like a little trim piece. It goes around, it clips in, and it gives you that nice clean look. Okay, so now you have your wiring harness. This is the factory. This is the uh, male, this is the female. You, you, you put them in. Make it sure they're nice and tight. What you're gonna do is you're gonna run the red wire, the switched power wire, in back. It's gonna come down over here, and then it's gonna come to this plug right here. All right. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna use one of these connectors. This little metal tab sticks out. You put it on the wire, right? Then you put the other the other wire on the other side and you squeeze the tab in, and what the tab does, it pierces the original wire here and the red wire and makes a nice connection. And once you, once you you know, this is what's sticking out, this metal thing. It's, you push it in with, um, with uh, pliers, and then you clip it closed. And there's your connection, it's nice and tight. And again, it's always a good idea to check power. I can't check power right now because it's basically I'm taking the engine out of the car, but I did before and it had power. And and then you plug this plug right back into the cigarette lighter and all your power connections are, uh, are done. Then you come back up to the top. After you plug that in, 
this is the other the other wire I'm talking about you see the factory one doesn't look like this so they have this one that goes in here makes a nice connection and then this is going to plug into the aftermarket radio as well as this so these are your two connections to plug into the back of the radio and once I do that then you just mount the radio and I'm gonna I'll, I'll show you from there okay so now we take the wires you put them back of the unit make sure it's nice and tight you got your antenna put it in there also make sure it's nice and tight all the way in then you carefully push it back in making sure you don't interfere with any linkages or anything anything binding and you just set it back in place until it goes on now you don't do that the reason why i did that is because something in the back gotta take it out again and see what's this plug maybe it should go on the top i think it's better to go on the top like this I think that should be okay on the top like that. And it goes in like this. This thing goes back on. Okay, then you get your four screws. One, two, three, four. And that mounts and then mounts your radio and the radio install is complete. And then you just reverse the procedure. You put this back on, make sure your cigarette light is plugged in. You put this back on, then you get your other seven millimeter, seven millimeter. There's clips on the sides. You clip them all in, another seven millimeters on the bottom, and you're done. Okay, and this is what it would look like installed. Um, if you uh, follow the uh, wiring diagram and everything I told you, it's gonna operate. <laughs> Okay, and then, um, like I said, on this particular Jeep, when you run the red wire, the switch power, what it does, once you shut the car off, she goes off. Okay? And without that wire, if you don't put that wire, the radio is never going to turn on. So when you turn it to, to the arm position. It goes back on. All right, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.